Here's my latest game in the Kalashnikov series. I uh, want to introduce you to this opening and perhaps encourage you to buy my course, which has been released on Chessable on the Kalashnikov City. And I think it's a really dynamic opening, but it's also quite a strategic opening as well, because when you have a fixed pawn structure, then plans are much clearer. Pawn structure determines strategy. So as we're going to see in this game. So this is a remarkable game. Jan Nishi playing white, Magnus Carlsen playing black, and Carlsen plays the Kalashnikov. Well, you can't get a better recommendation, can you? Um, so this was played in Ab the Abidjan Grand Chess Tour Rapid in 2019. Here, Nepo goes for uh, one of the most popular moves, knight c3. So Carlsen pushes that knight back to a3. And he plays bishop e7. There, are, I mean, there are several moves here. Uh, b5 is possible. Bishop e6 is possible. And bishop e7 is actually the move that I recommend in the course. So here, knight c4, recycling that knight, moving the knight yet again, is the main move. But Nepo goes for g3. And I don't think much of this move. I mean, it looks very solid, but there's a big drawback to this move, actually, as we're about to see. Knight of six, bishop g2. Here, Carlson plays b5, which is which is a really interesting move and turns out very well. Um, I think there's an even better move here, and that's bishop g4, which is a really provocative move, just to try and induce f3. And then the bishop goes back here, traps the knight in, and you go for d5. This the liberation station. Catch the d-pawn to freedom. Um, it's, it's a really nice position for black. Um, but anyway... There are alternatives to white after bishop g4 as well, but I think it's a good move. But b5, very typical, of course, for the Kalashnikov, threatening b4, making that knight on a3 look a little, little bit silly. So Nepo goes for knight d5, supported by pawn and bishop. And Carlsen exchange, ex exchanges on d5, pawn takes. So black loses a little bit of time. The knight has to go back. Um, but actually, the, the structure that has arisen is, is so common in the Kalashnikov. It's so common that white plays the knight into d5 and it's exchanged off. So white has this 4-3 queenside majority. Black has the 4-3 the kingside majority. Um, but so often we see in the Kalashnikov that this can be really favourable for black to have this kingside majority and well let's let's see how this game uh, develops because that'll that'll explain much better when you see the game so the knight recycles knight d7 and c4 so uh, i mean black has to be a bit switched on here if pawn takes then the knight can potentially come into uh, with b4, knight a5, knight c6, you know, that's dangerous. And and here, for example, you know, white's play seems to be developing quite quickly. So Carlsen plays what is absolutely typical for uh, th the system. He actually simply leaves the pawn on b5. Takes takes here and if knight takes b5 then bishop a6 actually wins material nice pin so knight c2 and that knight is going to spin via b4 into c6 so nice maneuvering for nepo and typically for carson he gets on he just ignores what his opponent is doing and is very targeted and directed and just continues with his kingside play. So I call this the steamroller. And we're going to see those pawns. Well, you watch what happens to them. It's, it's a pretty 
a pretty extraordinary journey. But Nepo continues with his plan, knight b4, bishop f6, that just gets it out of range of the knight, but also comes to a superb diagonal. Knight c6, and the queen steps out of the way. So this knight on c6 looks quite nice, but look at that beautiful pawn centre for black. And a4, so Nepo's trying to open things up. And, and here, well, Carlson goes for knight c5, but he could have taken here. This is really interesting. Just watch this variation. And now bishop a6. It's interesting how black just plays around this knight. Rook e1. Knight c5. Hits the rook. Wants to come in on d3. Rook a5. And now e4. Followed by uh, establishing that knight on d3. I mean, this is a tremendous position for black. You can see these pieces working beautifully. And the pawns just give black cover, uh, shuts out the, the bishop on g2, um, looks great for black. So that was possible. But Carlson went another way, knight c5, which doesn't look bad at all, actually. Bishop b3, knight takes, queen c2. So uh, Carlson is now a pawn up, but there's potential trouble here. Bishop d7, so now that's protected. And b3. Now, if that knight retreats, then white wins the pawn back. And, and, and that's a really nice position. You can see the bishop supports the pawn. The queen has connected with the knight. White center looks pretty good there. And this is where Carlson turned on the heat. He appreciated that if he falls back, he could lose the initiative there. So he went with f4. So if there are exchanges, then that rook in the corner is going to be in trouble. So, in fact, here Nepo should play bishop d2. Um, and e4, it's just really, really unclear. Um, but pawn takes knight. Let's see what happens. This is the game. Pawn takes e3, a takes b5, rook takes rook, rook takes rook. So, I mean, this is really brewing. You know, Carlson looks like he's made some kind of breakthrough on the king side, but nothing clear as yet. White's b pawn looks pretty menacing, supported uh, by the knight. You know, that could, could be coming through. So has Carlson misjudged this? Not at all. Bishop g5, this is a great move. So this is such an important concept in the Kalashnikov that this bishop breaks out to g5 and, and bounces around to this really strong diagonal looking at the king. So for example, if pawn takes, bishop takes, rook f2 hits the queen, and now bishop b6. So I think I've already mentioned the bad bishop bounce from e7 to d8 to b6. We saw that in an earlier bishop. Well, an earlier bishop, an earlier video. Uh, in this case, it's the bad bishop bounce onto this diagonal via g5 and e3. But once it's settled at b6, no matter how it gets there, what a piece blockading the b pawn, preventing a rook a7, and also looking down the king side and, and suddenly the position has just turned round, and it's black that has the attack. Let's go back. After bishop g5, Nepo decided to go all in. b6. He allowed black to take on f2. King here. Now that pawn has to be stopped, so bishop c8 stops b7. Now Nepo has to defend. Rook f1. Queen f7. Queen e2. And here, I mean, Carlson calculated, I think, an extraordinary sequence. He played e4. Now, what happens if that's taken? So if bishop takes, bishop h3, hitting the rook, bishop back, takes, takes, and queen d5 check wins. White's position falls apart. 
So Nepo found a fantastic defense. H4. So what's the idea? Okay, the bishop is hit. If the bishop retreats, then it's possible to take here. Because after bishop h3, white throws in knight e7 check. This is brilliant. Of course, if that's taken, then bishop takes and queen takes queen. And if king h8, then the bishop can block. And the difference between the last variation is that the knight protects the pawn on d5 and holds white's position together. An incredible defense. So what did Carlson do after h4? This is remarkable. He was up to the challenge. He found e3. This is just brilliant. Giving up the piece. Now, what's the follow-up? Looks very strange. Rook e8. Such a quiet move to follow up. Just protecting that pawn. And now he's simply going to hit the queen. Force the queen out of the way and play e2. This is the game continuation. King h2. It's the best try. Bishop g4. Queen has to take an e2. And one of those pawns is going through to make a queen. Now, it's still not entirely clear. Because Nepo found this. Carlson gets an extra queen. But you can see that white has bishop and knight. And the pawn protects the knight. So this still requires some accuracy from Carlson, but he managed to finish this one off. Let's just see the final moves to the game. Well, okay, now Black has managed to sort of coordinate the, the queens. I mean, it's still a little bit tricky, but Carlson manages to fight off the pieces and finally breaks through to White's king and... The game ended here. Well, white's fun is over and black is about to break through. Uh, just an extraordinary game. I think, you know, the the attack and defence here, the, the cut and thrust between the players, well, if the World Championship match is going to be anything like that, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, brilliant defence from Nepo. Brilliant counter-attack from Carlsen. But let's look at the, the key themes in this game, uh, as far as the Kalashnikov goes. Well, one key theme is the steamroller. Once you get this structure here with the king side majority for black, this is so common in the Kalashnikov. And then, well, we saw how Carlson strained every sinew to actually force those pawns through. So watch out for the steamroller. In this, with this kind of very common pawn structure in the Kalashnikov, that's one thing. And coming back here, bear in mind this move b5, and very often you can use this as, as even a pawn sacrifice to open up lines and get through into White's position. And in fact, as we saw, Carlson actually missed, oh, I don't know about missed, but he, he had another very interesting try in this position of taking here and using the queen side to actually and the center to conquer uh, this fantastic square in the middle of the board so yeah b5 a very very important uh, often sacrifice or pawn break anyway in the kalashnikov so do check out my course on chessable you'll find the link to the um, page that on on chessable in the video description or down there somewhere um and yeah i hope you enjoy it do do check it out it, it is a really interesting opening